What's up, Parkview Kids? Welcome to Parkview Kids Online. All throughout this month, we are learning about identity and community, two very important things. So let's all stand up and worship God together. Welcome to Story Lab. Skylar, I got your beakers. Oh, thanks. Hey, could you finish this? Sure. Awesome. Trade you. This week, we're talking about respect. Well, we take a look at something amazing Jesus said. What am I even doing? Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about respect which is showing others that they are important by what you say and do. Okay, gotta ask about the outfit. Why, what's wrong with it? Nothing, but I think it's visible from outer space. I'll admit, stripes and plaid usually don't get along. I wore this in honor of Opposite Day. Opposite Day is a thing? Yeah, it's on January 25th, but I just found out about it. To celebrate, I've even made a list of things that don't usually get along. Let's hear it. Number one. Cats and dogs. <laughs> Number two, heavy metal and polka music. Number three, pickles and chocolate.
Want a bite? No, thanks. Number four, water and oil. Water and oil. Wait, let's find out what gets along with water and what doesn't. It's time to play. Will it mix? We have here salt, oil, flour, and baking soda. Will our four contenders get along with this water and form a solution? Or like the Batman and the Joker, will they refuse to mix? A solution is formed when a chemical substance dissolves in water. Here goes. It appears that our salt and baking soda have completely dissolved in the water. But it's clear that water and oil do not mix and... Neither do flour and water. Sadly, they just don't get along. Let's try some more stuff. Honey. Yep. yep. Pepper. Nope. nope. Sprinkles. Yeah, yeah, nope. Wait a sec. I think the color is dissolving off the sprinkles. But the actual sprinkles don't mix. So it's a yeah, no. Or a no, yep. Those are two words that don't get along. It's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in Matthew, the very first book in the New Testament. But before Matthew, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. And everywhere he went, huge crowds gathered because Jesus spoke with more authority than any other teacher ever. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. You know, one day Jesus sat down on a hillside in Galilee to teach his disciples, but it wasn't long before many people joined the crowd. They were amazed at what Jesus said. His teaching went beyond anything they'd ever heard before. Blessed are those who are humble. They will be given the earth. Jesus claimed that people who are sad or humble or hungry or those who suffer for doing what's right are actually blessed. He said his followers are like salt and light. He said that calling someone a fool is just as bad as get this, murder. It all added up to one thing. What's on the outside matters much less than what's on the inside, what's in your heart. People squeezed closer to hear as Jesus continued. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But here is what I tell you. Love your enemies. Pray for those who hurt you. What? Up to this point, most wise teachers and philosophers had agreed that you should not hurt someone unless they hurt you first then you had every right to get back at them. If someone punched you in the mouth and knocked out a tooth, you could punch them and knock out their tooth. If they said something mean to you, then you should shout something just as mean back at them. But Jesus taught a new way of understanding. Love your enemies. Now, it's easy to think of your enemy as the really bad guys, like a super villain about to destroy the world, or a dangerous criminal on the run, or even the biggest bully on the playground. But your enemies can also be the people you're around every day, like the classmate who cuts ahead of you in line, even your little brother who's super annoying. Loving your enemy is simply loving anyone you don't get along with. That love is more than a warm, fuzzy feeling. You don't have to feel loving to love your enemies. In fact, 
you probably won't. Instead, you can speak kind words. If someone insults you, choose something kind to say in return. Don't grumble and complain about them behind their backs. In fact, you can show respect. There might even be something nice you can say about that person. You should also do well to them. If someone trips you up on the way to PE class, you can tell them that's not cool. But don't look for ways to get back at them. And most important of all, pray for them. Ask God to care for your enemy and help you forgive them. Prayer might change your enemy and it can change your own heart too. Speak, do well, pray. When we love our enemies like that, Jesus went on to say, Then you will be children of your Father who is in heaven. Jesus kept going. He said, it's easy to be nice to anyone who's nice to you. Anyone can do that. But God gives good gifts like sunshine and rain to provide for everyone, even people who do wrong things. We are made in God's image. And when we show respect and do good things for those who don't treat us well, we're actually showing the world what God is like. Okay, that's a lot to wrap my brain around. <laughs> no kidding. So, what's, what's our, our part, part in the story? story? Well, choosing to love your enemy is actually a really awesome opportunity. It's a way we can work with God to show God's love to the world. Like, maybe a kid on your soccer team keeps making fun of you when you don't block goals. Instead of saying mean things about them, you could cheer for them when they make a great kick. Or if your teacher loses patience and takes away recess for the whole class, even though it wasn't your fault, you could offer to clean up the classroom. It makes me think of my little brother. He drives me nuts because he's always borrowing my shirts without asking and getting stains on them. So what do you do? What I want to do is yell at him and mess his stuff up, but I could keep my temper and show him how to get stains out of them. Yep. You never want to let someone keep hurting you, but you can always respond with kindness. Exactly. It's not an easy thing to do for sure. But when we follow Jesus, we have the power of God's spirit to help us speak kind words, do well, and pray for our enemies. Gotta respect that. See y'all next time. Bye, Erica. So here's the thing, show respect even when you don't get along. Like plaids and stripes. Ugh. Ew, what is this? Fur, my dog is shedding. Oh. Hey, will it mix? Dog fur. Nope. nope. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. We'll see you next, next time. time. Beep. Bible verse for this month, Parkview Kids, is so important. It's found in the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 31. And I want to read it to you. Here's what it says. Do to others as you want them to do to you. Luke, chapter 6, verse 31. Our bottom line for this week, Parkview Kids, is this. Show respect even when you don't get along. So let's all stand up and learn this bottom line together. Ready? Show respect even when you don't get along. Ready? One more time. Show respect even when you don't get along. I love you guys. Practice it right there in your room. Let's pray, Parkview Kids. God, I thank you that you can help us to show respect even to those that we don't get along with. When the world seems like it's fighting against one another and not getting along, I pray that you would help us as followers of you to show respect even when we don't get along with someone. Help us to love them like you love them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, Parkview Kids. So let's wrap up our time together answering this question. When have you not gotten along with someone? I love you guys. I'll see you next week.